So what's a good time for, let's say, a 2,000 meter row? Where do you stack up compared to other people? You wanna know, and I wanna tell you. For those new to the channel, welcome to Training Tall. My name's Austin, and yeah, I might be six foot eight. You can't really tell while I'm sitting, but Training Tall is a mindset, and my goal is to help you develop the skills and strategies in fitness and health to take your fitness and health above the average person, even if you're short. Get it? And today we're gonna cover the topic of what's a good rowing machine time? Like what's a good time for a 2,000 meter row, a 500 meter row? Where do you stack up compared to others? How good are you? And that's a pretty deep question to ask. And just to be honest with you, right off the bat, good is relative. And how fast should you row or what your goal should be is different for every single person. Why? Well, first let's take a look at the world records. Taking a look at the world record chart, I mean, we're seeing 16 year old guys that are going under six minutes on a 2000 meter row. 16 year old women that are going under seven minutes. What the heck, so are teenagers the, the optimal rowers? Well, no, if you look into the 20 to 30 year old category, we start to see world record speeds that are even faster. But then as you get past that age bracket, the times start to slow down. But I mean, there's still 70 year old guys out there that are going under seven minutes. There's still 70 year old women that are going under about around eight minutes for the 2000 meter row. So does that mean at 70 years old, you should still be aiming for a sub seven minute 2000 meter row? Not necessarily. These are the world records. And so these are done by those that are most optimally built for rowing. And if there's one key takeaway, a hard truth, a hard pill to swallow, is that bigger, taller bodies row faster relative to smaller bodies. Just take a look at the men's 2000 meter world record. JDS and Henrik Stefansson hold the world records for the heavyweight and the lightweight 2000 meter row. There's a reason why those categories are separated. And just look at the differences between the two times that they rode. These are both world records, but it's clear that JDS's row was much faster than Henrik's. Does that mean that Henrik's just not trying as hard as JDS was? No, it just means that body types are different. He's a lightweight rower. He's a smaller guy weighing less. You can't physically, according to physics, row as fast as someone who's 6'5 and 220 pounds. If relative fitness, the bigger, taller bodies always win. If it's you who's 6'5 and your buddy who's 5'10, you guys are of the exact same fitness level, the 6'5 guy is going to outpower out row will always be faster with the same technique, of course, than the guy who's smaller. It's just the physics of the situation. But in the rowing world, you see a whole variety of different sized athletes. How is that so if just the tallest people are always the fastest? Well, you have to keep in mind that rowing on these machines, the raw power output, that doesn't necessarily translate to in the water on a boat because the bigger, taller bodies that are heavier are weighing the boats down more than the lighter guys or gals are. And so if you're not, rel if you're not strong enough to pull your weight essentially, in a rowing race, someone that's smaller than you might be able to outrow you because again, the body might weigh less, but if you're more efficient for your weight, and you have better technique and things like that, then you can outrow someone who's bigger and taller. But on the machine, you're not on the water. You're right here, and it's just a measure of pure power output. So the moral of the story is bigger, taller bodies win. Whether you're male or female, that's just how it is. And as we look through those world record age categories, we see that as we get older, the world records for those, for like a 2000 meter row, for instance, the time to completion gets longer and longer. So you have to keep that into account as well. You have to keep into account how long you've been rowing. How long have you been using the rowing machine? What does your technique look like? It's all gonna vary, but I can't stress enough what a waste of time it is to compare yourself to somebody else of like a different body type. 
Now, I'm not saying that smaller bodies can't like outrow someone who's bigger or taller. Maybe you can outrow your best friend, but maybe he rows like crap, or maybe he or she hasn't been doing fitness for a while and you've been training really hard the last couple of years, then yeah, you might outrow someone else. But again, if you're taking two people, guys or gals, same but or same, you know, same fitness level, different body sizes, the bigger, taller person wins. It's just physics. But this also translates to the workouts that you do as well. Like a 20 minute row. How fast should I row for a 20 minute row? I don't know. Are you doing it at a steady state, like sort of just holding a nice continuous effort? Are you rowing a 20 minute max effort? And again, taking into account body size and fitness level and age, it would be impossible for me to give you a specific split time to hold. Hold a two minute split time. Well, for someone who's 6'8 and fit, that's gonna be freaking easy. But if you're someone who's five foot four, even if you've been exercising for a really long time, that's gonna be so much harder to hold if you're like 60 years old and 5'4, a two minute split. It's all relative. And so what I encourage you to do is track your own workouts. Doing your workouts the best that you can, but learning your own individual split times, your own individual performance throughout these different rows. And if you're logging those down, each time that you go back to another workout, you have goals to hit right there to either match or beat what you did last time. And by doing that, that is setting you up onto such a more healthier, sustainable success path than trying to figure out what should I be doing? What should I be at? Because it's gonna be different for every single one of us. And if you're asking this question and you're not tracking your workouts, it's time to get serious. It's time to start keeping track of your workouts so that you can set yourself your own individual mini goals. And what I suggest is that you don't compare yourself to anyone but yourself. Unless you have someone who's of the same age and of the same fitness level and the same height, then you guys can go head to head, you know, or relatively around that. But don't let six foot seven Johnny boy don't compare yourself if you're five foot 10, 140 pound Alex or whatnot. So it's time to stop worrying about what other people are doing and it's time for you to be the best version of yourself that you can. And this is not to bash short people because there are so many amazing short athletes out there that are really fast for their size. There's always that dot, dot, dot for their size because again, it's all relative. Now, if you're seriously looking to see how you compare up to someone else, get that other person in a boat on the water with you where it takes into account weight and things like that. And that's gonna be much more of a fair comparison than trying to see a raw power comparison on the rowing machine, which is just gonna favor bigger, taller bodies. So I hope that I could shed a little bit of light on the subject. I know it was kind of like a ramble, but it's important for you to conceptualize and realize that you're not slow, you're not fast. It's all relative, you know? It's, it just depends on the person. It just depends on the body size. So give yourself a little more credit. Don't beat yourself up over not being as fast as someone else, because we're all different. Set yourself some personal training goals for yourself. Keep track of your workouts. Try to progress your workouts. And remember, if you're looking for workout books, I've got workout plans linked in the description down below. Also, my new on-demand follow-along workout platform, Hit Plus, is coming out very soon. Be on the lookout for that. It's another great option to help you go through structured workouts that are gonna help make you a better rowing you. So please let me know what you think down in the comments below. Don't beat yourself up. Keep training tall. Keep doing the best that you can. And guys, I'll see you in the next video.